Hey everybody, Mark here. If you love wine, but you tend to avoid buying French wine because it's difficult to understand what's in the bottle, then this video should be of some help to you. In this weekly tasting, we're going to be exploring two wines that come from what is probably the most famous winemaking region in the world, that would be Bordeaux. More specifically, the subregion of Saint-Emilion. While Cabernet Sauvignon is the most famous grape in all of Bordeaux, and often referred to as the king of all wines, Merlot is a close second, and often referred to as the queen. And in the subregion of Saint-Emilion, the queen reigns supreme. Bordeaux is probably the most famous and celebrated winemaking region in the world, and history tells us that they've been making wine here since at least the second century AD. In total, Bordeaux is a fairly large region, roughly 300,000 acres, mostly red grapes, and they produce about 900 million bottles of wine a year. And it's probably best known for its beautiful chateau, but interestingly enough, the chateau only represents a small portion of the 6,000 or more producers in this region. Relatively speaking, Saint-Emilion is much more humble and bucolic when compared with some of the more famous parts of Bordeaux. It began as a small medieval fortification that was built in the 8th century on the banks of the Dordogne River. Ancient documents speak of a light red wine that was being made here called Claret in Old French. And these are the same Claret wines that would become famous in medieval England. Of the roughly 13,000 acres of vines that are planted in Saint-Emilion, the uh, majority of them, 60% or so, are made up of Merlot. And the balance is uh, Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon. Generally speaking, the best wines that come from Saint-Emilion are blends made predominantly with Merlot. Merlot is a dark blue-black grape, and the name actually comes from the French word Merle, which means a blackbird. We know that the conditions in a vineyard will affect the quality of the grapes and also the wines that they produce. This includes climate and soil, what we refer to as terroir. The Merlot grape thrives in clay and limestone soils, which you'll find in Saint-Emilion, and it makes really soft, velvety red wines. Saint-Emilion is home to some of the most sought after and expensive red wines in the world. All right, so now that we're all masters and mavens of Merlot, it's time to taste these wines. And if you're the kind of person who prefers visual aids to help you learn, I created this placemat for you to follow along. You can download this from a link below the video. Let's start with this 2017 Chateau Macan Saint George Saint Emilion. Now that's a mouthful. Uh, Saint George was actually a small satellite appellation to the north of Saint Emilion that was appended to the region in the 1930s. And you can see by the color of this wine that it's medium intense and it's still relatively youthful because it's got some purple color to it. And as always, we want to swirl the wine to really intensify those aromas and of course the flavors too. And then get your nose in there. This wine is made from 80% Merlot, 20% Cabernet Sauvignon, and this particular wine doesn't see a lot of oak aging. The dominant aroma that I'm getting here is something very interesting, and I don't say this very often, rhubarb, sort of like a rhubarb pie. We do have some of that red velvety texture in here coming from the Merlot, but that 20% Cabernet Sauvignon is really adding a strong tannic structure to this wine, which in its youth is kind of coming off as a little bit tart, but over time will allow this wine to really age and mature well. Even though those tannins are strong in there, they could be easily mitigated with a food that has high protein. Pair it up with some meats or even some hard cheeses and it would smooth right out. That's a tasty but youthful Saint-Emilion that I think is really gonna need some time to show its best. Or you could pair it up with some really high protein food to bring it up to speed. So next, let's taste this 2017 Léo de la Gaffelière. This wine is made by one of the most famous estates in the Saint-Emilion region. They've been making wine here since the 1700s. And this Saint-Emilion is made with 70% Merlot, 15 Cab Franc, and 15 Cab Sauve. Let's see what it smells like. So there's definitely more of that dark berry fruit coming off here from uh, the predominant Merlot in the blend. And it's very woody too. It smells like fresh cut oak. This wine is lower in alcohol than the prior wine, but interestingly enough, it comes off as being smoother. And the reason for that is a process known as malolactic fermentation, which is a, a choice that a winemaker can make in the winery to change the acids in a wine, which makes it more buttery and smooth. Overall, it's a more savory wine than the first one that we tried, but it still has those really strong tannins in there that are gonna be needing some protein to mitigate them. This is a classic Saint-Emilion that I think is just starting to reveal its character now, but honestly, it could go for another 15 years before it shows its best. As with all great French wine, these are going to present their best if we pair them up with some food. Now I've got some great news. I've partnered up with a new friend, Chef Tori, to come up with some recipes for you. And rather than specify a particular dish to pair with each of these wines, this is one of those cases where either combination could work. 
Blue cheese has a way of really blowing up the flavors in a red wine, especially Bordeaux red wine. And Chef Tori's black and blue meatballs are gonna be a beautiful pairing. And next is a recipe for a shepherd's pie, which is everything that pairs well with tannic red wines all in the same dish. You have proteins, you have starches, and you have vegetables all right there. So while Merlot doesn't always get as much attention as Cabernet Sauvignon, when the queen of wine speaks, we should probably listen. Thanks for tasting Santa Million with me today. I hope you learned something and I also hope you enjoyed these wines. And as always, if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions about these or any wines in general, always drop me a comment in the comment section below this video and I'll get back to you. On behalf of Wines Still Sold Out, I'm Mark Supsig. Take care of yourselves and I'll catch you on the next bottle. Cheers.